Hi friends, so we shall discuss about the system of coplanar concurrent forces. So let me define what is system of coplanar concurrent forces. When all the forces are acting in a single plane and their line of action pass through a single common point, it is called as the system of coplanar concurrent forces. Let's understand this with the help of an example. So we have got a plane here and in this plane, Let's say we have got force F1, F2, F3 and F4. So if you extend the line of action, they are going to meet at the same point O. So you can see here all these forces F1, F2, F3 and F4, they are in a single plane and their line of action is passing through the same point O. So this is example of a system of coplanar concurrent forces okay so when all the forces are in the same plane and their line of action is passing through the same common point it is called as system of coplanar concurrent forces so let's understand how to find the resultant of the resultant of coplanar concurrent forces so this will understand with the help of an example so we have got here xy plane and in this plane, we have got forces F1, F2, F3 and force F4. And these forces are having their line of action passing through a single common point O. So this is a good example of coplanar concurrent forces. Now here, the force F1 makes angle theta 1 with respect to x axis. So we have to consider the acute angle. So F1 is making an acute angle of theta 1. Similarly, F2 is making an acute angle of theta 2 with x-axis. F3 makes an acute angle of theta 3 with x-axis. And similarly, F4 is making an acute angle of theta 4 with respect to the x-axis. We have shown here all the forces as well as their corresponding angles with respect to x-axis. Okay. Now we have to find the resultant of the system of coplanar concurrent forces. So we have to find the resultant of this particular system of forces. For that, we have to resolve each force along x and y direction. So let's see. So we are resolving force F1 along x direction and y direction. Okay. If you see here, this angle is theta 1. So this angle is also going to be theta 1. So we are going to resolve this force F1 along x direction and y direction. So along x direction, you will see the resolution of force F1 will be F1 cos theta because this angle is theta 1. So if you resolve this force along this direction, it will be F1 cos theta 1. Similarly, in this direction, it will be F1 sin theta 1. Okay. Now we'll try to see how to resolve the force F2, which is this along x direction and y direction. So this is the x component and this is the y component you can see here so x component will be f2 cos theta 2 because this angle is theta 2 and this component will be f2 sin theta 2 okay similarly we can resolve the force f3 along x and y direction so you'll be getting f3 cos theta 3 and f3 sin theta 3 and the same procedure we can follow for F4. Here we can resolve F4 in X direction as well as in Y direction. So that will be F4 cos theta 4 and F4 sin theta 4. So we are able to resolve all the forces along X and Y direction. Now we will make a table here and in this table we will write down all the forces that is F1, F2, F3 and F4 like this here and we'll write their respective x components and y components so you can see here we are writing f1 cos theta 1 which is x component of force f1 right now here we are going to follow a sign convention that is very important so there is a sign convention for forces so if the force is acting towards positive direction of x axis like this in this direction so it is taken as positive and if the force is acting towards negative direction of x-axis like this it is taken as negative okay so 
if the force is acting towards positive direction of x-axis, in this direction it is taken as positive. If the force is acting towards negative direction of x-axis, it is taken as negative. Similarly, if the force is acting upward, so if the force acts like this, in this direction, that is positive direction of y-axis, it is taken as positive. And similarly, if it is acting downward like this, it is a negative direction of x-axis, it is taken as negative. So there is a sign convention like this. Always remember, so this is going to be positive if force is acting this way. This is also positive. And if it is downward like this, it is negative and this is also negative. Okay. So this is the sign convention we are going to follow. So if you look at here, this f1 cos theta 1. Here, f1 cos theta 1 is acting towards negative direction of x-axis this way. So it is taken as negative here. Okay. Now if you see here f2 cos theta 2. So where is f2 cos theta 2? We have here, you can see here f2 cos theta 2. This. So this is acting towards right. Okay. So towards positive direction of x-axis. So it is taken as positive. Okay. Similarly now, we have got f3 cos theta 3. So this one is f3 cos theta 3. It is towards right direction. It means towards positive direction of x-axis. So it will be taken as positive here. Okay. So it is towards right. And similarly, if you go ahead and if you see f4 cos theta 4. So here if you see f4 cos theta 4 is acting towards positive direction of x-axis. Since it is acting in the positive direction of x-axis, this is also we have taken as positive. So only f1 cos theta 1 which was acting in the negative direction of x-axis was taken as negative remaining all are positive as you can see okay now let's uh, let's let's see the y components so this one is y component f1 sin theta 1 so it is acting downward direction downward means negative direction of y axis this is going to be negative similarly f2 sin theta 2 is also negative f3 sin theta 3 is positive it is acting upward direction positive direction of y axis and f4 sin theta 4 is acting downward again negative direction of y axis so it is again negative you can see here we are able to write down all the forces and their x and y components in this particular table now we will add this all x component together so that is called a summation of x component so if you add this up you will get summation of forces in the x direction similarly if you add these y components you will be getting summation of y component of forces so we are able to get the value of summation of x component of forces and summation of y component of forces of this coplanar concurrent system of forces okay now we'll try to find out the resultant of coplanar concurrent forces so first thing we'll find is magnitude of resultant of the forces okay so to find magnitude of resultant it is given as r so r is the magnitude of resultant force so it is going to be square root of summation of x component of forces that is summation of fx square plus summation of y component of forces that is summation of fy square so this will give you magnitude of resultant force okay now you would like to find the direction of resultant force so the direction of resultant force is given like this friends so it is given in terms of theta so theta is basically the angle made by resultant with the positive direction of x-axis and it is given by tan inverse of summation of fy divided by summation of fx please remember theta is what so theta is the angle made by resultant with respect to the x-axis okay so this is how we can find out the resultant in terms of magnitude and direction of the given system of coplanar concurrent forces we have got the magnitude of resultant force and the direction of resultant force now we would like to locate that resultant force here so if you locate that force it will come something like this this is the resultant force we got friends okay the entire system of coplanar concurrent forces is transformed into a single resultant force r having magnitude given by this length and direction given by this particular angle 